All right, in this video, I'm gonna give you guys a quick update on my Sig Sauer M18 pistol. So in the last video, which I will link down in the description below, I pointed out some of the cosmetic differences between the contract version of the gun, which I have here, and the commercial gun. So the contract gun, which is the version that's actually issued to the military, has a few cosmetic differences, such as the markings on the slide, the slide release is a little bit bigger, the rear sight assembly is different, but there's actually some significant functional differences as well between the two. On the contract version of the gun, you guys were kind enough to inform me that these actually have a thicker slide and barrel set since military guns use exclusively plus P ammunition. Uh, plus P ammunition will tend to wear guns down faster and just exhibit more wear and tear over time. So Sig Sauer went ahead and beefed up those high wear components on the military guns to increase their longevity. Now that's not to say that the commercial guns can't handle plus P ammunition, but your normal average consumer on the commercial market is not gonna feed their gun exclusively plus P like the military will. So that's why those changes were made. Um, you guys also informed me about why uh, the rear sight assembly is actually different on the military guns and why it features this one hole, um, one screw hole design rather than the two screw holes on the commercial guns. And that is because Sig Sauer has developed the Sig Romeo M17, which is an enclosed emitter optic specifically designed for the M17 slash M18. So the reason that they had to relocate the screw hole to back here beneath the rear sight is because on an enclosed emitter optic, you either have to do something like what Aimpoint did and create sort of a, a clamp mount for it to clamp onto, or you have to relocate the, the uh, mounting surface behind the optic since you can't have the screw holes necessarily just go through the enclosed emitter Otherwise, it would no longer be enclosed or it would occlude the optic. So uh, I'm not sure if that's a change that they're going to do on the commercial versions of the gun as well. I'm assuming at some point Sig Sauer will actually release that optic for commercial sales. But at least for the time being, the contract versions of the gun will be the only ones that that will actually fit onto. Since the commercial guns do not have the screw hole necessary back here to mount it. Um, it will also allow you to keep your rear sight and your front sight, and they will co-witness with that optic since it will sit low enough. If you see here, the rear sight is actually a separate piece from this plate. And so the plate will be removed and then the optic will go in and it will have a similar interface here that the rear sight will then stack on top of like it does now on the plate. So anyway, um, thank you guys for you know, illuminating that subject and, you know, educating me on, you know, the future directions for that gun that SIG is apparently taking. Now for the uh, true purpose of this video, I'm going to show you guys the contracted laser light unit that the Army has selected for the M17 and M18. So this is the Laser Max Defense Pistol Aiming Laser, or PALE for short, also known as the M17 M18 Pistol Enhancer. So, like I said, this is the contracted light laser unit for the M17 and M18. That doesn't necessarily mean that these will actually be used on issued guns. Um, in order for that to happen, units will actually have to order these, and end users will actually have to choose to mount them on the gun. And that's uh, not exactly set in stone whether that's going to happen. There's some, you know, pluses and minuses to this unit. I think it is okay, but not amazing compared to a lot of modern options on the market. So I'll just briefly go over the features that this unit has. So like I said, this is a laser and light unit. You have LEDs for visible and infrared, and then you have your laser unit right there in the middle, which is a good design choice because when you sight this in, the laser is gonna be dead center with your bore rather than being offset like on some other units. Um, the control layouts is pretty idiot proof. You have white for white light, you have red for off, and then you have green for infrared. So as you can see here, you have your infrared illuminator and an infrared laser peeking out there in the middle. Um, 
Um, the switches themselves are also pretty idiot proof. You tap it once and it'll stay on. Or if you hold it down, it will be a momentary light where when you let off, it'll turn off. So quick tap for continuous or hold it down for momentary. And again, this is nothing, you know, revolutionary or groundbreaking. Um, lots of lights do this, but it is, I think, the uh, ideal switch design. As far as the actual activation modes go, there's nothing goofy like uh, strobes or anything. Um, the actual placement of the buttons could use a little bit of work, but overall, it's not a bad unit. For the price that the military is buying these, which I believe is in the neighborhood of two to $350 a unit, don't quote me on that, um, it's probably not a bad little unit, but on the commercial market, these are commanding a bit more of a premium because they're harder to track down. Uh, Laser Max Defense all, does not actually sell these commercially. You have to find them from other sources. And I've seen them anywhere from $600 to $900, and it's hard to argue whether that's really uh, worth it or not. But anyway, let's go ahead and attach this to the M18. Just attaches using this one flathead screw on the side. And there we have it. You can activate it either with your trigger finger or if you have big hands like mine, you can reach forward and activate it with your thumb. It's not as intuitive as, as something like the Surefire X300 switch. I really wish they'd gone with something that featured that kind of design, but it's usable. Um, there are holsters available for this setup as well. Uh, Safari Land, there's a few of them floating out there that apparently were made for the trials for this gun, um, specifically this gun and laser. Um, they're not exactly easy to find, but they are out there. And I'm unsure of whether or not Safari Land will actually release any um, further products for this combo. I think it just depends on whether these actually end up making it onto issued guns or not. Um, if we're seeing a lot of uh, actual use out of these units by end users, then I think Safari Land would be interested in, you know, making some other holsters for it. So really briefly, let's just go through the user manual. So this claims to be the operating manual for the U.S. Army. I'm not sure if this is the exact same manual or not as the end users will actually get in the military. But it's a pretty descriptive manual, has some good pictures in it, just showing the layout of everything, how to change the battery. Um, this does take one CR-123A battery, and you do not have to remove the unit from the gun in order to change the battery, which is nice, so you don't lose your zero. And mounting procedure. Uh, it does claim that it is bore sighted at the factory at 10 meters on the M17 or M18. Um, we'll see if that's true or not whenever I go to actually zero this. And just some more instructions, maintenance. And here you can see some of the specs on it. And then the material used is glass-filled nylon. And then some part numbers for ordering spare parts. So that is the pistol aiming laser from Laser Max Defense. Um, kind of a neat unit, and if you are looking to complete your deployment kit for your M17 or M18, uh, this is gonna be a cool piece to have. So lastly, I'll finish up just by talking about uh, one small issue I had with the last video that I saw you guys talking about in the comments, and that is the pistol returning to battery. There were a couple points in the last video where I rode the slide home and I just allowed it to stop on its own. And as you can see, it stopped short of going all the way into battery. This is a brand new pistol that's unfired. It has no oil on the inside. But if you allow it to return home with the slide release, or if you just rack it normally, it has no problem returning home. But it is a bit tight whenever it gets to the point where it's about to return to battery. Um, so my guess is it just needs to be broken in and probably lubricated. But I saw a lot of you guys kind of beaten up on this pistol because of that, saying that there was something wrong with it or that SIG had, you know, quality control issues, etc. I don't think that's the case. I've had a lot of new pistols that did that out of the box and they just need to be broken in or better yet, 
just needed to be handled properly because riding the slide home on any pistol is not a good idea. So anyway, um, if you guys don't already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'll be sure to post updates on this pistol there as I get chances to actually go out and shoot it, as I you know get to actually go and try out the pail and share my experiences with that with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to get them as they roll in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you guys for watching.